Welcome to Better Picks in 90 Clicks. I'm your host, Tim Elke. Today we're going to be talking about exposure modes and how to use your light meter appropriately to make sure you get the proper exposure range. All cameras nowadays have light meters built into them. The light meters that are built into these cameras are called reflected light meters because it's actually metering the light that's actually hitting the subject and coming back, which does a couple things to your meter. I'm going to go ahead and put this camera into automatic mode into a shutter priority. So I choose the shutter speed, it chooses the rest. When I take the picture, it's actually going to be taking the meter and trying to gauge the exposure for me. Let's take a look. All light meters average out a reading of gray, the middle area of your picture. Reflected light meters on average, average out the entire scene, which usually has a lot of brights, a lot of darks, and a lot of highlights. So it a lot of times has a proper exposure. So as you can gauge from the different pictures, when it's shot on the black, the gray, and the white, it's all going to look gray according to light meter the way it's set up. So what we have to do is actually gauge our subject if it's all black or all gray or all white in our scene and to know how to meter it effectively. If we have gray and it says it's right in the center of our meter, it's going to be right because our subject's gray. If it's white, we actually have to make it a couple stops brighter than the, what the meter is giving us. Or if it's black, we have to make it a couple stops darker than what the meter is actually giving it. In order to get the best exposure, we should use an incident meter, which actually is different than what we have the reflected light meter. It actually records the light that's actually coming into the scene. If we take a meter from an incident reading, it actually gets a very even exposure, which works out very, very well for us. That's Better Picks in 90 Clicks. Tune in next time to learn about macro photography and how to properly focus when taking close-up images.